Hey guys, it's Hi Luke yo. and Jack with Motor Minds, and today we are in our 1986 Porsche 944 doing update number two for you. That we, we are. We have done many, many things to the car, as we will describe in this video. This car drives like it's a completely different car it from drives the like first a new car. car. Oh, it's insane. Absolutely insane. So, as you learned in update number one, we put on a new timing belt, new balance shaft belts, new rollers, tensioner, water pump, all that good stuff yes. that you need so that way your engine doesn't explode. So that was pretty essential. Um, if you guys haven't seen update number one, I recommend that you go ahead and watch it now so you can stay in the loop with what we're doing with the car. Right. So for update number two, um, basically we, um, two weeks ago, got together and did a bunch of general maintenance items on this car that have been neglected for a very long time, am I right? Yeah, um, so a lot of the things you're supposed to do every, what, 30 to 45,000 yeah. miles, and uh, they've yet to be done. Yeah, so. and this car is 32 years old, so um, it, it was bad. You know, 90-something so, thousand miles, right? Yeah, that's about 89,000 miles. 89? Uh, yeah, but so we got back and we um, were doing all sorts of stuff. We had new spark plugs that needed to go in, new spark plug wires that needed to go in, a new fuel filter that needed to go in, new distributor cap, new distributor rotor. Uh, what else did we do? I feel like we did more than that. Fuel filter. I mentioned that. You did? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you just a normal oil change, but that was yeah, from uh, I did the oil. One. I did, actually didn't mention that in update number one. We did a new oil change with a new k and oil filter and a new k and air filter. That completely yes. revolutionized how the car drives. So, yeah, I mean, the thing is, those are all general maintenance items. Spark plugs, every 30,000 miles, they've got to be changed. Spark plug wires, every 30 to 45,000 miles, they've got to be changed. And they were all original. The plugs were 32 years old. We and the them. difference in new ones. Oh, are it was ridiculous. Huge, we pulled them out, and the, and the diode at the, on the bottom of the spark plug that creates the spark was eroded to within like an inch of its life. It was, Let me, uh, <laughs> and I'll tell you the story about how uh, we needed a new distributor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god. So the wires, those were also the original wires. Right. But So yeah, um, we go to pull up, that was, was it you? Yeah, it was me. Yeah. Um, so so we the, the, the wires, wires basically were kind of seized onto the distributor cap because they were so damn old and they hadn't been greased in forever. So he's holding the distributor cap, I'm yanking this wire with my um, pl um, spark plug um, wire boot removal tool. And next thing we know we hear a crack. And the one of the distributor, I think you call them the distributor nipples or whatever. Yeah, no, that's the metal bit, the plastic part uh, that it kind of slides into the that the rubber boot slides onto on the distributor uh, cap. So that cracked free snapped. from the distributor, and turns out that um, part of the plastic actually included the uh, metal bit that the rotor makes contact with in order to spark. Yeah, so we so actually that was out lost of a cylinder. So we, we didn't necessarily lose a cylinder, we lost it intermittently because it wasn't sparking. By the, the end, time. we lost it completely. But the thing, yeah, we did lose it completely by the yeah. end. But we drove it to Cars and Coffee the next day, and everything was running perfectly. Car ran so much better. And on the way home, I tried drag racing my dad in the Miata, and, and it just kept misfire. And it started to misfire really bad. So we pulled the distributor off, and the whole thing, the distributor cap had cracked in half because the force of the um, rotor spinning in there and just the overall vibration of the engine had caused the crack to expand and it actually cracked the distributor in half. And then pieces fell off and then the rotor, rotor decided to spin and eat that up and crack more of it. Yep, and, so uh, it, it was, so it was a disaster. So luckily we found one distributor cap in the area. We had to drive like an hour round trip to get yeah. it. But we popped that in and it was whitely, quite vastly improved. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the, pl the plugs and wires look awesome. We have blue NGK spark plug wires that were made specifically for this car. Yes. And damn, do they look good. They look pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. And I mean, it's not all about the looks. The car does run a whole lot better. It is amazing the difference that it makes just keeping up with your general maintenance. Because we didn't know there was anything wrong. You know, oh, yeah. It was it ran fine before, but the problem was we didn't know how good it was supposed to run. Yeah, exactly. So once we got everything replaced, we're like, holy shit, it's a new car. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's absolutely insane. We just thought and the engine was supposed to run that rough. Yeah, and the other um, thing that was crazy was the transmission fluid. You're supposed to flush that oh, every... Oh, yeah, we did that too. Every 60,000 miles, you're supposed to flush it, and I swear to God, the last time... Um, it was flushed was in West Germany when it was being made. Yeah. So West we, Germany. Yeah. It was made it in West was, Germany because it, it was built on August 25th, 1985. I actually found a sticker 
um, that said that that's when this car was built. So it's a 32 year old car, and it's all it was also built for my grandmother's 41st birthday, which is kind of interesting. Back in 1985, but yeah. So kind of besides the point, the fluid was disgusting. What did it smell like? A uh, horse's ass? Oh, it was god, god awful. That was the one of the worst smells. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, but we did inspect the bottom of the transmission, the pan, the and there were no well, there metal flakes. Well, there's no flakes. pan. It's a metal. It's a well, well, not in this transmission because yeah, it's but we it's stuck a our finger in there and you know checked out all the fluid and checked for metal bits and there and was there none. None. So. so we put new Redline MT90 in it, and the shifts are so much better, yeah. so much smoother. It doesn't clunk as much when you're engaging a gear. What an improvement! And don't mind the uh, noise from that seal. That's good. We just fixed. decided not to put it on yet because we want to get it painted. Yeah, that's another thing so, that we are going to be mentioning in the update. So, previous update, I said that I wanted to paint the car Viper Green. Now, however, we realized that what happened was it was wrapped on the hood and then sprayed really terribly for the rest of the car. So we're thinking, oh, we'll just save it and have it be the original paint color by sanding off this paint. Now we realize that that's not very possible. Well, yeah, turns out the reason that someone repainted it, this gorgeous red purple matte I'm gloss not sure if gorgeous is the finish. word that I'd use. Yeah. But. Um, sorry, it was terrible. That yeah, was the ter word terrible I was, was the appropriate word. Um, turns out they painted it for a reason because the paint underneath it, which is actually garnet red, yeah, not, not mahogany, mahogany brown, brown metallic. metallic. I, that's another thing, I tore out the entire trunk and just deep clean the hell out of it. Um, and I found the factory paint and interior color codes, and it turns out this car's not mahogany brown metallic, it's garnet red metallic, which is also a special option color for 1986. So, now the new thought is, let's paint it garnet red. Exactly, so here's what we're gonna do. I went to Mako, and before all you car guys like, oh my god, Mako is like such a crappy paint job. Ladies, be quiet, it's actually the best that we can do right now because we're both in college and we're both flat broke. And when I went to Mako, the, if Mako, it's a franchise and it varies very much on location. And the location by me gets five stars from like 60 different review guys. The people that work there are supposed to be awesome. I went They're in, very nice. had talked the appraisal. The guy seemed super genuine and he actually showed me a car that was recently painted with the same paint package that I'm going to put on this car and it looks awesome. So for 900 bucks, the whole thing's going to be done in nice garnet red with sanding and everything. It's going to look great. You can expect that in probably about a month or so. Yes. And I am quite excited. It's going to look like a much better car. And of course, yeah, I mean, it won't be 100%, but it'll look a damn sight better than it does now. And 10 years or so from now, when I have actual money, maybe I'll we'll do a full Concord's uh, restoration on her. But she just can't. She can't get that can't level get that of care of with our current financial current situation. financial situation. But you see, if like all you guys just subscribed, yeah. then we or just start sent Venmo us money. Yeah, you guys can Venmo us money anytime. Cool. If you guys want, we can start a GoFundMe. That's always an option too. That'd be fun. So. Um, if you guys just want to give us all of your money, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, just your shit. life savings. Four uh, hundred one k, just cash that out. You know, yeah. write a big fat check to children's Marzella. college savings. Motor, 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 yeah. Your just children don't that. need an education. My car needs to be painted. We <laughs> we can educate them through our videos. Exactly. We'll put up math tutorials. It'll be fun. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so let's run them through interior options. What were yes. you thinking? So we were on a website called only944.com and they sell custom made seat covers. Oh, that I have will, to call them. We do need to call Sorry. them. Sorry. That's a minor thing. Yes. But we're going to do these custom made seat covers. Um, I was going to do those in December, but now that I've decided that the paint is a priority, it it'll probably be priority. pushed back to like February once I scrap together more money for them. But we're ready for comments on what seat colors you think we can get. Feel free to go to only944.com, link in the description below, and check out our potential um, options for colors. We're right. thinking of a burgundy because we think that would go very so, well. I think we have two options here. We could do burgundy and then we could keep everything else stock, black, normal. Yeah. Or we can kind of customize it a bit and do a two-tone interior. Yeah, um, this, is, this is a lofty aspirational goal. So, I mean, sure. it's doable. Um, and the reason why I said I want to call only 944 um, is because I want to see if they would be open to potentially uh, creating a custom leather wrap dashboard for us uh, for a reasonable price, obviously. Um, because then we could do something cool like, you know, cork seats and some 
dark blue dashboard with a leather inserts in the door yeah there's a well. lot of potential um, here. or we could do um because we want this like car a, to stand a red out dashboard, that's the thing know? we want this car to stand yeah. out be something you need. contrast stitching you know like just you get in it and we want you to be like what the hell is this this is awesome you know yeah. we don't we don't want it to be a, just a traditional 944 we want to kind of have some fun with it and that's why we want to get your input um because it's what this car's all, all car about. people are really see OPR. It's what we aren't. bought this car for, was to interact with you guys, the viewers, and make this MotorMinds vehicle. So whatever yeah. the MotorMinds general consensus is, is something we will consider. We won't necessarily do it, right, but, but we'll it will it be a consideration account. of ours, legitimately. So that's always fun. But that's basically everything that's new. Car has been running great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this thing has just been awesome so far. It, Everyone that says the 944 has been unreliable, I kind of call bullshit right now just well, because ours been... the turbos are unreliable. The turbos are unreliable. The I'll, standard give, it, I'll give you that. Here's but... the thing with the standard cars. They can actually be pretty damn durable under the assumption that they've been taken care of. Yes. What's hilarious is this car has not been taken care of. And it runs beautifully. And it runs awesome. Because now everything on it, except for the paint and some interior pieces, is basically new. I think it's safe to determine that the uh, most reliable car in the world is an 80s Porsche.